quick a uh, couple of um, a couple of things just to kind of give you an idea on on the technical side. If you're having an echo, uh, it might be that you're logged in twice. So again, um, you know, you might be logged in twice. Yeah, if if you're going to step away for a second and come back, I would just leave it logged in uh, because I would not be surprised if we see the room fill up today. We've got such a big crowd um, registered. So again, we appreciate you guys taking the time to be with us today. Uh, real quick, give you a quick risk disclaimer. You guys know this. Uh, anything you can do to make money, you can also lose money, and that's kind of part of life, part of trading. You know, they say there's risk getting out of bed in the morning. So again, uh, the traders that are going to be sharing with you, sharing education with you today, uh, they're going to be talking about trades that work out well. They're going to talk about trades that didn't work out. But again, with every trade, there's risk involved, and you've got to be comfortable with that risk. Tell you a little bit about the Trading Pub. The mission of the Trading Pub is to provide a place for our patrons to hang out with some of the top traders in the industry. The pub is the place to receive quality education, all while interacting with traders and investors who are just like you. Uh, through the Trading Pub, we want you guys to learn about the market, and uh, we've got relationships with top traders literally from all across the globe that come in here. Uh, I can tell you this, the uh, speakers that are speaking today are not getting paid to be here. Uh, they're doing this for free out of their time. Uh, and educating other people. So we really appreciate that. I uh, appreciate uh, all of them taking the time to be here today and share with you guys. So uh, we want you to enjoy your time here. If you've ever been to a trading pub event, you guys know that uh, it's pretty laid back. It's all about education. You know, you're not going to come here and get a um, heavy sales pitch. It's all about learning about uh, the market and uh, trying to learn from each other. So we appreciate you guys being here. And then we also try to put a focus on charitable giving. 10% uh, of any revenues generated through Trading Pub are given to charities that benefit the inner city revitalization and workforce development. And you can learn more about those on our website if you go to the Favorites tab and click on Charities. All right, so, so one thing to think about before you get here is you know, think about which one of these two represents your current trading, uh, how you feel about your trading, uh, whether it be the first example or the second. And so I think that uh, at times we could all probably answer that we were in under the second category. Uh, but you know, we're here to learn. We've got successful traders that are sharing their story today. And so I hope that you guys can listen and learn as much uh, as you can from them. So yeah, <laughs> number two, but $100 bills. Yeah, sometimes, it's, sometimes you're in, in box number one, sometimes you're in box number two there. But again, our goal is to help you transition from number two over to number one right there. If you want to stay up to date with us, our website is www.tradingpub.com. That is where we'll be uh, posting the recording for the event. Uh, also, we're in the Twitter sphere and on Facebook as well. If you want to check us out there, we'll try to post a copy of the recording there as well. Um, just over the 50,000 mark on Facebook. So the rules of the road here, basically, uh, like I said, it's all about education. All we really ask of you, if you're going to be here, you know, we've got four different speakers. They're talking about four different topics, and you just don't want to be this guy. So if for some reason one of the speakers is talking about something that doesn't really strike a chord with you, you know, don't be the guy that types rude stuff in, but simply, you know, log out and uh, come back in. But if you're going to be here, we want you to be cool, we want you to enjoy and learn as much as you can. Uh, and again, I really appreciate all the speakers taking time out of their day. Like I said, they're not getting paid to be here, uh, but they're taking time out of their day to share with you guys. So. Thanks again. Uh, yeah, you guys are definitely, definitely in for a treat. Uh, just to kind of give you an idea of the schedule, uh, Tom Busby is going to cover stocks and options, followed by Hubert Sinners is going to cover future strategies. Uh, Ross Mullins is going to cover Forex. Then Nick Chaheen is going to cover options. And then we're going to talk a little bit about binary options as we close things out. All right, everyone, at this time, I'm going to turn things over to Tom. So, uh, Tom, I'll turn it to you. You've got about 40, 45 minutes. And I'll put a timer up there for you. Uh, that way you guys can keep track of it as well. So, guys, thanks again for being here. And, Tom, you can go ahead and take it away. By uh, saying, can you hear me? Well, super. That's a good start with technology. Uh, before I get into the presentation, I'm going to give you some, uh, I was preparing for next week, and I thought I would share some numbers with you on different markets, and then if I have time at the end of the presentation, I'll come back and cover these. Let me just go through these real quick, so get out your pen and uh, paper. Uh, for the E-mini, uh, 1628, 1623, 
1628-1623. Just write it down, and I'll come back and explain it at the end of the presentation. For the NASDAQ, 2974-2958. For the Dow, 150 or 15,073, 15,024. For the uh, Russell, 969-965. For gold, 1431-1424. For silver, 2334-2315. For oil, 9444-9409. That's 9444-9409. Bonds, 14604-14521. For corn, 645, one number, 645. For soybeans, 1413, 1408. For wheat, 720, 716. For Apple computer, 459, 71, 455. For Google, 880, 872. For Amazon, 263, 260. For Visa, 179.88, 177.55. For Netflix, 219.75, 214.56. Okay, the one thing that I try to do each month when I get started looking at the month, I look at, I look at historical information and I try to figure out what are the odds certain things might repeat themselves. Okay, and when I came into May, um, I re, uh, we have a guy at our, at our office called Chuck Crow, and Chuck does a long-term forecast for me. And, and this month, he's got 1666 for the S&P as a target, okay? 1666 as a target. Uh, so anyway, uh, I'll come back to this after I finish my presentation. If you didn't get the numbers, they'll be in the tape, or you can scroll back up and get in. Or, or or I'll repeat it at the end if I get a chance. But let me get started. Thank you, Morgan, for inviting me this morning. Uh, I see Hubert's here. What a great trader Hubert is and other people. So I'd like to say hello to everybody that's making part of this. And Morgan's doing a good thing here, folks, because what he's doing is, uh, number one, bringing education to you. And the more you learn, the better you'll be at this game. And uh, number two, helping the charities out is really good. I like that. So. Anyway, let's do it. It seems like all traders talk about risk, and I'll just I'll just make it simple. Uh, you have to risk, or there wouldn't be a reward. And risk has to be personal because everybody's different. There's a picture of our building in Mobile, Alabama. Um, I think it makes DTI a little bit different in the sense that we do have bricks and mortar and we train inside that building about the futures market, the stock market, and the options market. And uh, we built it in 2001 and um, I wish the skies were pretty today. They're a little rainy here in Mobile. All right, our goal with what my subject is, it's a simple goal. How to make money using simple option strategies on stock. And I'm talking about real simple, uh, call up, put down. So if you buy a call, it goes up. If you buy a put, it goes down. That's your strategy. And I got some time goals on this too. And this is a trade that, uh, that I'm really excited about to share with you today. Uh, I think if you take this trade and study it, it will really help you uh, in your other trading also. We call it the irrational exuberance trade. Because if you ever noticed in the morning at 8.30 central time, and I will be talking central time when I'm talking about times in the market, uh, the markets open, and that's the New York market open at 8.30. And when they open, they seem to, they seem different uh, vehicles. Everything starts moving because, because the bells open. And it's like a horse race. And I don't know if anybody watched the Kentucky Derby was sort of like that. It just starts out in the morning and takes off. Well, I figured out how to measure that and how to make money off of it, and I'm going to share that with you today. My background, been around a long time, folks. Uh, you know, I, I, I think about, you know, all the years I've been doing this, and I still, you know, I still get excited when I, when I walk in on a Saturday morning 
and we're talking trading on Saturday morning. I, you know, when I was learning this stuff, we didn't have the internet. We didn't have all these ways to get education. And I mean, I mean, when you think about where everybody's at and and, and being able to communicate, it's a wonderful thing. And um, you know, I think that uh, that's an advantage. Uh, I've got three books. Winning the day trading game is sort of the, some of the stories that I share with you as I was learning to do this game. Uh, the markets never sleep is the global market, which I believe in, and I know it will make you consistent if you will learn it. And then, of course, the last part is how many people with emotions in the market, you know, they always have the emotions. You know, they, when they lose, they go, they just throw out everything they're doing when they have a loss. Well, let me tell you, losing is part of trading, and you've got to build losing into it, okay? And I think it's important that that you have a good plan, and that's what this book's about, Trade to Win. The 24-hour global market. Now, the overview is there's Asia, there's Europe, there's the early part of the U.S., and the late part of the U.S., and there's a break in the U.S. market between 12.30 and 1. I call that lunchtime in America, okay? So I just want you to visualize the market kicks off in the Far East, Asia. It sort of sets the tone for the, for the day. And then you have Europe, and either they buy into what Asia did or they reject what Asia did. And you usually have market changing about uh, 3.30 in the morning. And then, of course, then you have the New York market. But the overview is looking at the globe. And that's what it, a picture looks like with the times and everything that goes into that uh, that kicks it off. A lot of traders, they, they might trade for 10 or 15 or 20 years and never use this. If you will listen to me on this, this will improve your trading. And the reason I say that is because I discovered it back in the 90s when I had a Globex terminal. And I saw what was happening at night and how to apply times at night. And then and now in today's market, just look at that map Morgan showed at the very very first part of the uh, of the presentation today. He, he threw that map out. You see where everybody was at? All over the world. So you have to know that. Here's the map right there. It gives you, and this makes my point, you've got Canadians, Australians, Japanese, South Koreans, I mean, you know, people in Afghanistan, India, everybody's involved in this market that's moving 24 hours a day. And those tactics have to be understood if you're going to be successful trading the market, the 24-hour market. Now, I know a lot of you spend your life studying charts. I mean, I've seen students come in with, with charts, and they're so crowded with stuff that I, I say to myself, how do they know what to do? And so I want, to, I want to start you out going back to simpler times. I want to go back to a, to, a, to a place that really was a breakthrough for me when I identified on a 30-minute chart the following three patterns. I want you to think about this. And then go check it out in every trade you did last week if you had just looked at these, these patterns. You want the current bar to have a higher high than the previous bar. That's a long position. Or you want a short position when the current bar is less than the previous bar. And then, of course, there's that stay out period. We call that long, shorter out. So if you can come up with an approach that will get you on the right side of the market, then your odds are going to increase just by this very simple approach and attack of the market. And here's what the reference bars look like on the 24-hour market. You've got the Asian market, the European market, and you've got, and if you look at the blue bars, that's what I'm talking about, reference bars. Can everybody see the reference bars, the blue bars? That's a 24-hour market for everybody to see, okay? That starts the different worlds, we call it, Asia, Europe, U.S. and U.S. Lake. Now, today's presentation is going to focus on what happens we call RB3. It starts at 8.30 Central Time, RB3. Now, and this is how you put it all together. You've got the reference bars with the times. Now, by the way, this starts Sunday night, and those numbers I gave you will help you understand 
what these blue bars are telling you as you go into Sunday night, depending on what market you're trading. Now, if you look, Sunday night, we start at 5 in the evening. And then the market trades through to Asia, or gets through Asia, and then we open up Europe about 3.30. And then 8.30, we have the U.S., and then 12.30, we have the afternoon. Okay, now let's apply what I just showed you on a bigger or longer term basis. Who trades Apple here? Who trades Apple? Okay, I'm going to give you what I call the code of Apple. And I want you to take Apple and write these numbers down. It opened the month of May at 446. So generally for the month of May, Apple has done what? gone up, right? It's gone up. This week it opened at 455.71. It broke that opening of the week on Friday and went down. And actually went as low as 450. So Apple's been up generally, but on Friday it turned south. Okay? Now, let's think about options. I know that Apple's a pretty rich stock, isn't it? Okay? So let me give you what somebody gave me years ago when I was trying to understand options. I don't use a lot of the terms a lot of people use that trade options, even though I've been trading options for 30 years. I use simple and direct. Let's talk about that. If I think a stock is going to go up, I want to buy it. When it comes to options, I got two strategies. I can sell puts or buy calls. That's for an up direction. In Apple's case, when Apple went down on Friday, I could have shorted the stock. I could have bought puts. Or I could have sold calls. And that brings in the pivot numbers and other, other things else. So, Think about this. For this IR trade, I'm talking about either buying a call, and how do I make money if I buy a call? If the market does what? Goes up. If I buy a put, how do I make money? If the market goes down. So, Taking that into consideration would give you an easy, simple strategy if you wanted to use options. Now, of course, you know, have to know how to enter the options and know how to do all that, but we'll get into that in a second. Okay. I'm laying the foundation. A call option, you buy it if you think the market is going up, the underlying. A put option, you buy it if you think the underlying is going down. Simple, straightforward. Strike price. This is where... The option buyer and the option seller make an agreement. One takes an obligation, the other one has a right. We call that the strike price. So if I picked Apple and I said at the money, I would pick a price of 555. That's where the option price is at the underlying security. In the money for a call option is when, when if I picked 550 and looked at a call option, I would say that call option is in the money. An expiration date. That's the last day an option contract is valid. Now, what I'm trying to do, I know a lot of people get confused with options, but you're going to need options if you trade the IR trade, and I thought it would be good if I educated you just briefly. Now, this by no means is, is everything you need to know about options. I don't want you to think that. I'm just trying to get you familiar with the terms as I show you this trade where it's not it just doesn't, it's, it's, it's not rocket science, but it's just straightforward. All right, this is a simple overview of options to help you execute the IR trade, okay? Yeah, I'm sorry, Mark, I did say 550. You're right, 450. I was thinking of the yearly open, which was 555, using the code. Okay, now. Our job is to find a stock that moves around the New York Open at 8.30 in the morning. I'm going to tell you the stocks I like to play. I like to play 
I like to play NASDAQ stocks. I like to play stocks over $100 a share, and there's a reason for that. And I like to play stocks. I know that's got enough volume that if I get in that stock, I'll be able to get out of that stock in a short period of time. Very liquid stocks. You probably heard of some of the stocks I like to trade. Now, here's three of them. Visa, Amazon, and Apple. Now, here's a tool inside our software that helps me analyze any stock I want to put in there. And you'll notice on Friday, what color is Apple? Red. All right, so let's go apply the strategy that might pay us on Friday with Apple. Would it be a put if we bought a put on Apple, right? You see how that works? So we identify the big picture, and then we go to the stock and the option, and at the money at 555 on Friday would have paid you if you'd have played it short, okay? That's how that works. Big picture first. You got to pick the right horse to ride, and the, and you know if you look at Apple, you got to pick the direction, and the direction was down on Friday. And it starts getting to be fun because what we've done is, how many stocks are on the New York Stock Exchange? How many stocks are in the Nasdaq? How many stocks do you have to choose from? So right away, I've been doing this for 30 plus years, I'm telling you, narrow your field down. Learn the personality of the stocks you're going to trade. You'll do a lot better. And number two, who can keep up with all that stuff? Just get the stocks that you're used to moving that's going to pay you. Simplifying it. Simple, simple, simple. All right, here's Apple. The monthly open was 446. The weekly open was 455. That became my pivot on Friday. If you look at the magenta line, you will see once it broke that, okay, the direction was clearly down all the way to 450. Now, let's backdoor in a good strategy on this particular trade where everybody can get an understanding of it, okay? And there's Visa. If you look at Visa, it was also negative. There's some numbers on Visa. By the way, that Visa number I gave you early, earlier was 179.88. Notice it's above its opening, and Visa is still negative right now going into next week. That was one of the things I was going to comment. And Amazon's another stock, okay? Amazon right now had a monthly open of 253, a, a weekly open of 258, and Amazon is starting to, uh, to clear all that and looks a little positive going into next week. I'll talk more about that at the end, okay? Just stay with our, here's Google. I see you put all five stocks I, I thought of find in there. Monthly open, 823. The weekly open is 848. Anybody know where Google closed this week? About 880. And see, I knew on Monday, and I actually got, what options do you think I bought on Google last week? Let me ask that question. I bought calls, okay? Because the prevailing trend was up. We actually were in Austin, Texas. That's Hubert's, uh, where, where Hubert has his company. But we were down in Austin, Texas on Monday and bought Google down there at a workshop we were at. And it finished out the week at 880. That Google's been on a run. Netflix, this stock has got a great product, very hard to trade, but I will trade it. With the IR trade, I think I've traded it about four times out of the 40 times I've traded the IR trade. Um, you can look at the weekly open. I think I gave you a number. If it gets higher than 220 this week, look for higher, okay, IR. All right, now let's go back to the IR, the way I've set it up. I want to start with the basic unit, okay? 
And I want to start with what I would say using two contracts. And let's just explain the Apple trade using two contracts. I think it's a lot easier to trade multiple contracts than it is to trade a single contract. Who agrees with that? Okay. And I think it gets into psychological as well as financial reasons that two units work better than one. Okay. Okay. So structuring a trade, let's go back to Apple's. You got to determine your entry, okay? And so, looking at the chart on the Apple, and I could go back and show it to you, but I remember it was about 4.55 was the pivot number, okay? Matter of fact, let me do that real quick. I want to go back to that chart on Apple just to show you where I got that at, okay? See the 4.55? See that magenta line right there? Everybody see that? That 4.55? That's what I'm looking for—a break of that line which tells me we're, we're about to rock and roll. All right, we're trading two units. We're going to determine our entry. We're going to determine our target on trade number one and target on trade number two. For the IR trade, I like to get a dollar. For target number two, I like to get two dollars. Determining my risk, okay? Let's see if he's got a slide in there that shows you how I do it. Makes it simple, perfect, okay? If it's a $10 option, I use a stop of $7.40. If it's a $5 option, I use a stop of $3.40. If it's a $2.50 option, I use a stop of $1.70. Now, why am I doing this way before I trade? Why am I, I want you to stop and think about this. Why am I outlining this way before I trade? Because what happens after I get into the trade? You know what happens. The emotions take over, right? And so what I do is outline it, and I simplify it. So if I got a $10 option, I'm using a 740 stop. If I got a $5 option, I'm using 340, 250, 170. I pick these levels because it allows my trade to work. Number one, and I know it's inside my risk quotient. Okay, so does everybody understand why I do this plan? Okay, assuming a $5 option, I'll sell one unit at a dollar profit, and I'll sell the second unit at $2 profit, okay? And if it was a $10 option, I would double the, the profit size, okay? Simple, straightforward. Have I lost you yet? Have I lost you yet? I got two units. I'm going to sell one at a dollar, and I'm going to sell one at two. Let's keep going. All right. It opened at 457. It went to 459.71. It had a low of 450, and it closed at 453. My strategy would have been to buy two put options at a strike price of 455 with an expiration date of May 17th. Okay? Two put options. What would those options approximately cost me on Friday if I'd have bought in at 455? Do you know? Around six dollars a share. Where would I sell? The, where would I sell the first one? If I paid six, I'd sell the first one at seven. Where would I sell the second one? At eight, right? See how that works? Okay. So if you bought two options at six, your exposure, total risk. If you you know, if you never looked at it again. You could lose twelve hundred dollars. Everybody understand that? Not doing anything, you could lose twelve hundred dollars. That's your total exposure. If you sold one of the options at seven, your exposure is reduced to five dollars or five hundred dollars. If you sold the last at eight, you received eight hundred dollars for that. That trade would have made you three hundred dollars on your twelve hundred dollars and twenty five percent. Have I got your attention yet? Let's go back over this. Have a plan. Have a trigger. And follow the plan. Now let's look at this. I hope he's got this slide in here. This is a real good slide. Let's look at accuracy versus risk. How many people here are baseball fans? Oh, 
Okay. Let me teach you something about risk versus reward. Okay. If you've got a baseball hitter that hits 400, and I'll just name his name, okay? Uh, I'll test it and see if you're really a baseball fan or not. If they hit 400, do they make the Hall of Fame? And who is that baseball player I'm talking about that hit 400? Let's see how, what you really know. Okay. And this is sort of my batting average with this trade. I've done it about approximately 40 times. I've had 32 winners, eight losses, and my accuracy is about 80%. Now let's put this on a map and check it out. Let's say you lose $1 on two of the trades, and you make $3 on eight of the trades for a net of 22 with an 80% accuracy. That would help. This would be a great core trade to learn for your account, wouldn't it? Now, you'd have to plug in your real numbers to determine your own accuracy and own risk, risk rate, okay? But what I'm saying is you don't want to look at one trade. You want to look at 10 trades. You know, I hear these, uh, I, I used to call them the one trade wonders. Let me tell you, do 10 trades to make one trade. And then from those 10 trades, check your accuracy. It's going to give you a better assessment of how you're analyzing, interpreting, and executing, OK? All right, let's go back through and, and sort of summarize here, OK? Pick the horses. On Monday morning, I can already tell you I'm going to be using the following stocks. Apple, Google, Amazon, Visa, and Netflix. Okay? Those are my five stocks I'm going to look at Monday morning. The second thing I'm going to do, and I can do this before I trade Monday, I'm going to look at where those stocks open the month at and where they open the week at. Now, the plan has me entering this trade somewhere between 8.30 and 9 o'clock on Monday morning. Now, I don't know which one of those five I'm going to buy right now. I don't know which one of those five I might play up or play down, but I know the following, don't I? I know where my stop will go depending on the option price I play. I know where my target is depending on the option price I get in at. I've tried to eliminate anything that I need to do other than pick the entry. Okay? Everybody got it? And then I go to the compass, which is a specialized chart that helps me identify the structure of the market. And then I just let it go. And then at the end of that, the decision you have to make is whether you want to go play golf or go to the beach because you really don't have to sit in front of the computer if you do this right. All right, let me stop here and answer some questions because I've got some more stuff to show you and i got a little time to show you, okay? So, uh, I, okay. Walt asked, do I buy on Monday for expiration on Friday? Yes. Now, on Thursday and Friday of the week, I go out to the next week, Walt, okay? I told you the time was 8.30 to 9 Central Time, okay? I know when I'm going to do it. I know what I'm looking for, and I'm waiting for the big picture to show itself, okay? Now. Okay, the, yeah, the basic trading plan, let me do that real quick. There's the stocks. Let me see if it's back before that. 
Okay, I look at the big picture. I'm going to summarize all this at the end, but I wanted to show you the steps I do prior to Monday, okay? Yes, Linda, I use a 30-minute, okay? Those are the stocks I'll be using Monday. I'll be using two units. Now, you can use more than two. It's just I'm using two because everybody can that should be doing it can do that, okay? My plan, I looked at Apple on Friday to show you how it worked. I showed you that 455 was the trigger number and the strike price, and the put was the buy. I showed you how the money worked. I told you what I've been doing, and then I said, let's look at 10 trades and see how the money works out. The five steps of the IR trade, you pick your horse. I already picked my horses, right? Bill, Bill, that's a great question. Let me explain. Years ago, I used to have all kinds of charts on my screen, okay? Years ago. I'd have I'd have tick charts, and you have and, and, and you could say if you got these, because it's funny to, to see people what their you know, evolution as a trader. But anyway, I studied. I studied. I said, what? I'm looking at all these charts. I'm staying up to 10 or 11 uh, at night studying these charts. They really wasn't helping me. And I said, let me study what the old guys did. And I'm talking about people like Livermore, people beyond Livermore. Anybody ever heard his name? But I studied that. And then I studied the exchange, how it works. The Globex terminal was real, real possible. And so I found out that on the, on the exchange floor, they wash out the trades every 30 minutes. I said, okay, so everybody's on a 30-minute clock. I went up there, I visited, I saw it. And then I started studying Barron's. I noticed all their back data was on a 30-minute time frame, okay? And so I decided to eliminate the tick charts, uh, the five-minute charts, the 10-minute charts, because I came into to the realization, keep it simple. And that's when it changed for me in 1992. So 30 minutes is the core unit of time. And if you go study things, and he just, uh, JW just said, hey, how about the TBOs chart? Absolutely. Okay. I looked at all those. All right. Any more questions? Because i got some more stuff, I think. Let me ask you a question. Are you... Do you like this kind of presentation? I just need to ask that because this, this is unique from what I normally give. But I wanted to take you through my mindset as I do this trade. I, let me tell you, these are insights. Number one, do everything you possibly can do, do everything you possibly can do before you actually get into the market. And so that's what I do in my planning stage, okay? Because I'm just like you. I might have been trading for 30 years. But once I get that trade on, I become a cheerleader with a skirt. Go, go, go. You know what I mean? So what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is get all the stuff we can get out of the way before we actually pull the trigger and get in the trade. We know where our wrist is. We know when we're wrong. We know all those factors before the emotions take over. <laughs> Thanks, Georgia. Yeah, Tom, and I do have a worksheet, but uh, you know it's sort of hard sometimes to transfer what I'm using on my on, on just a plain old notepad and into a slide. I want to thank Adam Mallory for putting these together. All right, let's talk about that. Okay, here's some questions. Let me answer these questions. How do I pick my stock? Okay, I like stocks over a hundred dollars a share. I prefer Nasdaq stocks. Why Nasdaq? mainly because NASDAQ stocks have a tendency to run faster out of the gate. Go study it. If you take the top 100 stocks, you'll see more movement in those stocks than maybe you would on a New York Stock Exchange stock. Compare IBM to an Apple, for example. Okay. All right. Number two, how do I pick the winning stock? Well, I have a special tool I designed called the horse race. And if it's leading in the indexes, and you all know about the E-mini, the NASDAQ, the Dow, if the indexes are going up, I know that 75% of all stocks inside the indexes are going higher, which gives me an insight to say maybe I ought to pick a leading stock, and that would be a 
stock that would be green in the horse race, okay? How do I determine what option and strike price to use? I got simple rules. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I use the current week. Thursday and Friday, I use next week. I've already eliminated that thinking. What strike price? It's pretty simple. I look at where the stock's trading. I find the closest strike price to the, to the underlying I can find. How do I decide when to take action? Okay, here's, one, here's a little technique. It takes about five to seven minutes from 8.30 for liquidity to come into options. So I want to let the liquidity grow and the bid and ask narrow on the particular stock I'm looking at before I make my trade, okay? Now, this is all experience and techniques I'm sharing with you, but it's going to help you, okay? All right. Brenda asked, is it 30 minutes in, in one day or over five days? It's the 30 minutes, okay? Okay. Now, I'm going to go back to the Apple chart. I wish I could display my, my roadmap and show this to you, okay? Because it's real simple when it's laid out on there, but uh, if you've got... A, uh, let me go back to that Apple real quick. This is working out perfect time-wise, by the way, Morgan, because I do want to cover those numbers again. Because that's next week. All right, let's take Apple. Do you notice that the weekly open was at 455.71? Do you see that? Okay. Also notice, if you look at that chart there, does everybody see that blue bar here? This blue bar, I called it the reference bar. You see that? Okay. What's the prevailing direction for Apple right here? Down, right? Because I'm, I'm only trying to trade this in this first half of the day. I really don't care what happens in the end of the day. I'm really trying to trade it in this day. So once it broke the 455 area right there where that, you all see that? This looks like a, a, a magenta color line. See that? Uh, John, that is the midpoint of Apple, okay? That is the midpoint of Apple right there. And once it broke the midpoint, and I'll teach you something about How many people use Elliott Wave? Let me ask that question. I love asking this question. Who, who uses Elliott Wave? Who uses Stochastics, MACD, Fibonacci, uh, a lot of different technical stuff, right? Okay, I used to, I used to be an expert in all that stuff. Probably would still be if I if if I if I brushed up on it, but I don't use it anymore because I simplified it. And here's the way I simplified it. Okay, I said to myself, my job as a trader is not to predict the future. My job as a trader is to trade what I see. My job as a trader, okay, is to determine am I in an up wave, down wave, or if I'm in a corrective wave. Okay, a corrective wave, you want to be buying on dips. In a down wave, you want to sell. So I said, well, how do I know who's winning and losing? Okay, because I know, knew I wanted to play with winners, right? The winners are the ones that end up taking the money. So I said, let me think about this from a logical point of view. If I start out every day, and I determined that if I bought on the open, this is hypothetical, if I bought on the opening and I'm losing money, who's making money in that case? The short, right? The short's making it, right? So I want to play on the short side if I had bought on the opening and I'm losing money. If I bought on the opening and I'm making money, I want to be on the long side. So it's a simple approach to know who, who's winning, okay? 
And so I measure it by the opening price. Now, when do I get the opening price for Apple? You have to know when Apple opens on the New York Stock or when the New York Stock Exchange opens, right? What time of day does that happen? 8.30 in the morning, right? 8.30 Central. So I know at 8.30 Central time, Apple's going to open, and they're going to start determining who's winning or losing from that time period. Now, this brings in the global approach. Remember me talking about the global approach? And I said you have four different time, times around the globe, and these are the times, and this is the time I'm playing. Morgan, can you show in the reference bar three time right there? And so I already know on Monday morning at 8.30, these five stocks are going to open, and then I look for the prevailing direction because I've done my homework and I'm ready to trade. Okay. I'm down to four minutes. I want to go back. When I first started, I gave you some numbers. Let me give you these numbers again for people that came in late. This is for next week, okay? This is for next week. Okay. Now, for the E-mini, 1628, 1623. For the NASDAQ. 2974, 2958. Can you type these in there, Morgan, for everybody? And I'll know that everybody's hearing to me for the NASDAQ. E mini, 1628, 1623. NASDAQ, 2974, 2958. Dow, 15,073. 15,024, the Russell, 969, 965, gold, 1431, 1424, silver, 2334, 2315, crude oil, 9444, 9409, bonds, 14604, or 14604, 14, 14, 145, 21, corn is 645, one number with corn. Soybeans, 1413, 1408. Wheat, 720, 716. Apple, 459, 71, 455, 55. Google, 880, 872. Amazon, 263, 260. Visa, 179, 88, 177, 55. Netflix, 219, 75, 214, 56. And insight for the month of uh, May, we should see 1666. Now, let's go back to Apple in here, and let me show you how to use this on Monday. This is all you got to look for. Okay. Everybody see that monthly open 444? Tell me you see it. You see the weekly open 455. So here's what I'll be looking for on Monday. We closed at 453. I will take the opening from Monday at 830. If we're below the opening at 830, then the market should trade down towards the monthly open on Apple. If Apple trades down on Monday, and how will I know it's trading down? This is where you got to know what the average true range is of Apple. Anybody know what the average true range of Apple? Let me teach you something. The average true range of Apple, the ATR. Okay, that's your homework assignment. Brenda, you got 14 or 10 points sounds about right, okay? So, if and that's from the high to low average on Apple, okay? So, here's what I'll wait for. The market opens at 8.30. Let me take you through it like a play-by-play. -play. Market opens at 8.30. Apple opens at 4.54. After seven minutes, Apple's trading below 4.52, which is almost 30% of that ATR. It's red. The index NASDAQ is down. I'll take Apple short by buying a put. Which option will I buy? The one that expires next Friday because it's Monday. What price will I pay? Somewhere around five to six bucks.
folks, it's been a pleasure being with you. I'm out of time. I wish I had more time to, uh, to spend with you. Morgan, thanks again for inviting me. I hope I didn't bore you. I'm done. Thanks, Adam, for putting this together. And I see I got a lot of people here, so thank you very much. You got a great group of speakers lined up. You're going to love it. If you would, if you join the special class, you also will get a bonus of being able to trade live with me for the rest of May. And it's a good charity, so we're going to donate that to those people that sign up. Morgan, you got it. Thank you very much. All right. All right, great. Thank you, Tom. Yes, we did record. Uh, we're recording all the sessions, so we'll get you a copy of that. Um, and, and something we did today is, is we asked all the speakers, we said, you know, we appreciate you being here. If you'll just come and give education, I know that kind of a 45-minute spot can be a lot of time for a lot of information. So we asked them all if they'd be willing to take two hours next week uh, and do a class for everyone and put that together. And so basically we've done that. We'll tell you more about it. Uh, in, in a couple of minutes, but I want to get, get to Hubert's talk. But each of the speakers agreed basically to um, do a two-hour, take part in a two-hour class where they each speak for two hours. So again, each speaker will speak for two hours, so it's going to be an eight-hour class on the topics, kind of going it more in detail. And then they also agreed to give all the people in that class the opportunity to trade live with them for a period of time. So again, uh, we'll tell you, tell you about that later today. Uh, after Hubert speaks, but again, just wanted to kind of let you know that, and I appreciate Tom being here and all the other speakers. We've got about 900 people here, uh, so incredible crowd, and uh, again, at this time, I'm going to turn things over to Hubert.